Hello everyone, this is April with Craft Knife Chronicles and I'm here to share my latest paper crafting project with you, a steam locomotive. I'm calling this project the Steampunk Locomotive because I used Graphic 45 Steampunk Debutante Paper Collection. I've had the idea of a locomotive project in the back of my mind for quite some time and I finally got around to designing it. My version is based on several early steam locomotives. It's been interesting to learn about the locomotives and how they work. I've taken some artistic license, of course, and for those of you that are train enthusiasts out there, please forgive me if I get some of my terminology confused. This project is entirely made of chipboard, both medium weight and lightweight. It has several sizes of wood dowels for structural support and design elements. The entire project is about 14 inches long, 9 inches high at the smokestack, and 6 inches wide at the widest part. There's also a hidden compartment which contains a small mini album, and we'll see that mini album later in our project tour. So let's talk about what we're seeing as we take another little spin around and then we'll move in for a closer look at some of the features. On the right we see the cab and it's about four inches by five inches by about four and a half inches tall. And the main feature of course on any steam locomotive is the boiler. That's the long cylindrical part here. And on this project, it's about 3 inches in diameter and 8 inches long. On the top of the boiler, there are four elements. Closest to the cab, we have the steam dome, then the sand dome, and of course the bell, which jingles, and then the smokestack. And before we turn to look at the front again, we'll see down here on the bottom the large wheels. And then coming from this cylinder in the front is a piston connected to the rods which drive these wheels. And on top of the cylinder is a little steam chest. Now let's look at the front again. Here on the top of the boiler you can see a light and perhaps when we come in for a closer view you'll be able to see the little light bulb inside of there. And as we turn around to the other side you can see that both sides match. And then finally we'll turn and look at the back of the locomotive. Here instead of having windows or a door or anything, I just decided to decorate it with some of the elements from the paper line. So now let's zoom in and look at some of the features in detail. We'll start with the cab. The windows have panes made from Tim Holtz frosted sheets and trimmed with a border from one of the decorative papers. I usually use a plain dark cardstock behind the window panes but in this project I decided to use a decorative paper since there weren't going to be any mullions. I just took one of the papers from the paper line and darkened it up a little bit and put it behind the frosted panes. The cab, as well as most of the other parts of the locomotive, are trimmed with strips of paper And I added four millimeter half pearls just to decorate it. The paper actually in the collection had a circular element that I could use to place the pearls. I think there's about 20 feet of trim in the project 
and at about 20 to 22 pearls that's about 400 or more pearls that were attached to all the trim. It adds up fast. For the boiler I used lightweight chipboard, scored every eighth of an inch so it could be easily curved around some circular support pieces. There is a railing on either side. Let's see if we can come in a little closer and see that. That's made from an eighth inch dowel and it's attached with little brackets made from chipboards. Then you can also see the brown platform here that runs the length. Now I've come in a little closer so we can look at the steam dome on the left and the sand dome on the right. The steam dome has three sections. First there's a cylinder made from scored lightweight chipboard and then the bottom edge was curved to form around the boiler. Then there's a slanted section also made from light chipboard. And anytime you see these shapes on the locomotive that are slanted cylinders like this one on the steam dome or this one on the sand dome and in a minute the parts of the smokestack, they are based on geometric shapes called frustums of a cone. Once I know what height I want that slanted piece to be and the width of the upper and lower parts of the section, I use a mathematical formula to help me determine how to draw the shape in order to create that piece. And on the right we have the sand dome. If this was an actual locomotive, there would be pipes running from the sand dome to deliver sand in front of the wheels. But on this locomotive, it must magically just get down there. And then the sand dome is just made from a cylinder on the bottom and then a little top which has that frustum again and a little wood button on the very top. Now we'll slide down a little bit and look at the bell and the smokestack. I've also changed our angle here a little bit just so you can get an idea of how the bell is being held up. It's a little sawhorse-like contraption just made out of medium weight chipboard and the bell is suspended from the center of it. That bell is about one inch in diameter at the base and it's about an inch and a quarter high. And now we're taking a little bit more of a slightly bird's eye view of the smokestack. So hopefully you can see that it is hollow inside there at the top and that's just to add a little more realism to the element. And the smokestack itself consists of a cylinder on the bottom with some trim around it, then one of those conical frustums, another straight cylinder with trim on it, and then finally at the top another frustum. Now I'll change the angle and we'll look at some of the elements on the front. Now here's the front and let's start by taking a closer look at the light. And hopefully you can make out that there's a tiny little light bulb sitting in there. The light is constructed like a little house out of medium weight chipboard and then that opening is covered with more of the Tim Holtz frosted film. And then below the light on the front of the boiler I used part of a cherry Lynn dye to create that um, lighter colored spoked element and then just a little gear on the very center to decorate it. And then finally here's a look at that decorative element on the front of the locomotive. Now let's turn and look at some of the details on the bogey. So I'm just going to turn this slowly so we can talk about how this all came together. There's a support piece, I think you can see it here, underneath the boiler that comes out with kind of wings that the cylinders are attached to. And then that support piece plus a kind of a wedge piece in the front and a wedge piece in the back that you see there as we turn. Both sit on top of a platform and then with the wheels that's the little bogey in the front of the train. 
and now we can also see uh, I used a 1 8 inch dowel up here to come out of the steam chest as one of the pipes there and then here's the quarter inch dowel that's connecting to the wheel rods over here to drive the train. There's also kind of hidden in the inside here just some pipes. I don't think they have any kind of uh, realistic purpose but I just kind of thought it needed something underneath there. Then here we are at the back panel. I've just fussy cut some elements to decorate this. And then I think you can see just above the butterfly there's a little round thing that's a hitch fastener which serves as a knob to allow you to pull off the back panel. So I'll do that. And that's where the little mini album is hiding. So we'll take a look at that next. So here's the little mini album that goes inside of the steampunk locomotive. It's about three and a half inches tall by seven inches long and about an inch and a quarter um, thick. And just has a couple of little uh, card stock and decorative paper charms here on the end. And then on the front I created a pocket with Tim Holtz uh, steampunk on the edge die. And then I just cut out some little tags from the paper line to put inside of there. And then this little gear here is actually a magnetic closure on a ribbon that can open up. And then on the inside, it's very simple. There are four pocket pages. Each page has room for a tag that is three by six. And then on the front of the page, there are decorative elements that hold some little quotes that I thought were appropriate for uh, a theme like this. And so each page has just a little pocket and a quote going on. More tags. Quotes, tags, and that's that's it. I just there was only room to have a small uh, mini, and so that's what I made. I hope you enjoyed taking a look at this project. It was a lot of fun to design and make. As I constructed the project, I made a series of videos that will soon be available on YouTube, as well as a materialist cutting guide and templates that will be posted up to Dropbox and can be downloaded should you wish to make one of these locomotives for yourself. This is April with Craft Knife Chronicles. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.